but Ben McAdoo is the head coach of the New York Giants. Should not be a head coach. Don't be afraid to give him a kiss now. He slicked his hair back this year, <laughs> and he's been dumber than a brick since day one. I mean, I don't know if it's that there's a correlation. All right, we got our work in today. We finished a minute early. Dan has been spiraling out of control. Sounds like a guy who shouldn't have been a head coach. Are you guys best friends? Got that cow blood. Like a guy who, quite honestly, just doesn't have any idea as far as how relationships are really supposed to be conducted. Time, tick tock, here we go. McAdoo is not the right man for the job. I said all along, every time I, I watch McAdoo do a post-game press conference, I say to myself, he is the most uninspiring coach I have ever seen. You'll be selling tickets to this deal. So with my recent video about Jim Tom Sula, the former 49ers head coach, and I highly encourage you to go check that video out after this one plays, it turned out really well, and I think this video will be very entertaining also. But after making that video, I got the itch to look for another head coach to talk about, and my brain immediately went to this guy. Ben McAdoo was not a great coach for the New York Giants. If you remember, Ben McAdoo replaced the legendary coach Tom Coughlin, who won two Super Bowls for the franchise, both against the New England Patriots. McAdoo was supposed to carry on the legacy and help the Giants make the playoffs again after a couple of bad seasons under Coughlin. So today's video is about the legend of Ben McAdoo and what exactly went wrong with his tenure with the Giants. Because if you thought Tom Sula got messy, boy, this one turned south really quick. First, make sure if you are new here to hit that subscribe button, it would really help me out and the channel. Make sure you leave a like on this video that would really help me out as well. So if we want to look at Ben McAdoo's coaching history, we have to go back to 2006 because in 2006, Mike McCarthy became the head coach for the Green Bay Packers and added Ben McAdoo to his staff as the tight ends coach. McAdoo coached the tight ends for the Packers until the 2011 season and then coached the quarterbacks from 2012 to 2013. McAdoo was a member of the coaching staff that won that Super Bowl over the Steelers in Super Bowl 45. Then in 2014, Ben McAdoo joined Tom Coughlin's staff as the offensive coordinator for the New York Giants. In his first season as offensive coordinator, the Giants offense improved from the 28th highest scoring offense in 2013 to the number 13th offense in 2014. And then in 2015, the offense took another leap forward, becoming the sixth highest scoring offense despite losing their starting left tackle, Victor Cruz, and their starting tight end for most of the season due to injuries. So obviously, McAdoo's first two seasons as offense coordinator, he looked like he knew what he was doing. He revived Eli Manning's career. He was doing great with injuries to some of his best players on his offense. Odell Beckham was shining. There were just so many positives with the New York Giants when McAdoo got there that it made a lot of sense after Tom Coughlin would eventually leave to promote him to head coach. Now, despite turning around the offense in 2014 and 15, it really was never enough. The Giants went 6-10 both seasons, so Tom Coughlin was kind of forced to resign, and the Giants looked for a new head coach. And they had their guy sitting in-house in Ben McAdoo. They wanted to go with an offensive guy because Tom Coughlin was definitely a defensive guy, and the offense was making some positive steps moving forward. And on January 14th of 2016, McAdoo was named the Giants' 17th head coach in franchise history. Entering the 2016 season, McAdoo won his first game as head coach when the Giants defeated the Cowboys 20-19. And the Giants Giants first season under Ben McAdoo was a massive success. They finished the 2016 season with an 11-5 record under Ben, tying the franchise record held by Dan Reeves for the most regular season wins by a first year head coach. The Giants finally made the playoffs again, first time since going all the way to the Super Bowl and beating the Patriots in Indianapolis like I mentioned, but in their playoff game against the Green Bay Packers, things took a turn for the worse before the game even started. Odell Beckham was seen partying on a boat a week leading into their playoff game and it just was a bad look for the team. And the the Giants went up to Green Bay and lost 38-13, and the season just ended on a disastrous note after having a pretty decent year. And after the game, it was reported that Odell Beckham punched a hole in the wall in the locker room at the Packers Stadium. There's a hole in the wall in uh, the locker room in Lambeau. Uh, we and I take full responsibility for it, and uh, that's not the way we want to be acting after ball games. And then on their plane ride back to New York, the Giants just completely trashed the plane. And that is exactly what kickstarted Ben McAdoo's downfall. And then the 2017 season was just an absolute disaster. The Giants had a ton of injuries to numerous players, and they had a lot of controversy spark out which included some players being suspended from the team for team violations, and the Giants started out 0-5 to start the season. But the biggest controversy came during this season, where on November 28th of 2017, Ben McAdoo benched Eli Manning for Geno Smith 
prior to a Week 13 game against the Oakland Raiders, which ended Eli Manning's 210 consecutive start streak. This was a disastrous moment for Ben McAdoo. This sparked a lot of outrage. Honestly, Eli Manning really wasn't playing great during the season, but to say Geno Smith was a better option is just an absolute joke, and it screwed over Eli Manning's consecutive start streak, which is something that is very hard to achieve. He did Eli Manning so dirty, and it was just a disastrous situation. And after losing that game to the Raiders 24-17 and sitting at a 2-10 record, Ben McAdoo was fired by the Giants on December 4th of 2017, along with general manager Jerry Reese. Obviously, the worst thing Ben McAdoo did was benching Eli Manning. Even if Eli Manning really wasn't a superstar ever in his career, he didn't deserve to be benched. But the Ben McAdoo era can really be summarized by these few things. He had a terrible running attack. The offensive line was awful when he was the head coach. Like, looking back, I understand what the Giants were doing promoting him to head coach after turning around their offense, but you know what? That doesn't mean he can turn around the entire team. The team took such a step back. His top passing offense under Coughlin just completely fell off. And then when we talk about McAdoo off the field as a coach, he was just a really dumb guy. He had no media skills. He just didn't seem like a leader at all. His players just did not play hard for him. It seemed like they didn't really even want to play at all. And he ran over his players with a bus. McAdoo was everything you don't want to do when you're a head coach. He burned a lot of bridges. He made a lot of people angry. And his reasonings for doing some of these things, it seemed like he didn't even have an answer. He was just kind of winging it, it seemed like. And that's not something you want with your head coach. That is just a terrible mix. And when you're in New York and you're coaching the Giants, people are going to be very vocal if you're doing things wrong. And that's what happened to Ben McAdoo. All sorts of people in the media were heavily criticizing this guy after he benched Eli Manning. And I think that the media pressure really was what got him fired. Now, unless you're a Giants fan, you might be a little bit interested to find out what Ben McAdoo has been doing since he was the head coach of the Giants. And after getting fired in late 2017, Ben McAdoo actually did not return to coaching until this past season. In February of 2020, he was actually brought in to be the quarterback's coach in Jacksonville under head coach Doug Marone. Now, the Jaguars obviously went 1-15 this past season, and that would be his only season there, but he actually joined another team this offseason. And just like Jim Tom Sula working for the Cowboys last year, Ben McAdoo was just hired by Mike McCarthy to become a consultant with the Cowboys this year. So Ben McAdoo is still in the NFL, but he's not really in a big time position at all. You know, McAdoo was not known for his style. His suit game made it seem like he was an NBA draft pick back in the early 2000s. He wore his suits way too big. One of the funniest things I saw was somebody said Ben McAdoo looks like the scared knight that gets sent into a dark cave to see if it's safe. And that comment basically summarizes Ben McAdoo as the head coach of the Giants. It was a horrible tenure for Giants fans and things really spiraled out of control after the Odell incident and obviously the Eli Manning incident. It was just a disaster. I'm sure every Giants fan wants to forget what happened with Ben McAdoo. Easily, he's one of the most criticized coaches I've ever seen in the NFL. And I've been watching the NFL since 2007. So Ben McAdoo, his tenure with the Giants, very forgettable, but also very memorable if you want to look at a coach that did everything you shouldn't do as a head coach. He didn't do anything like illegal or malicious, but it just seemed like he was never meant to be a head coach. What he did with the Giants proved he should have never been a head coach. So that's going to do it for this video. If you are a Giants fan, I would love to know your thoughts on Ben McAdoo down below. Let me know what you thought about him as a coach, maybe if you ever met him. Your thoughts on what he did with your Giants, because man, what a disaster that was. So I appreciate you guys watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Peace. Say that again.